en question. The president, Le président, please be seated. Veuillez vous asseoir. The court is now back in session. Counsel for Mr. Nunji, you may now proceed. Thank you, Mr. President. Your Merci, Honest. Monsieur le Président. Madame, uh, Monsieur le Juge. During the break, I uh, spoke to uh, my colleague, Mr. Sonaru, and he has informed me that our client has, in fact, been able uh, to give instructions, a pu des instructions and that he has, a, that he has now signed Ses a, sont les a written withdrawal Il a retiré uh, of his waiver, of his earlier waiver. Précédente. We are now in the process of uh, sending uh, to the trial chamber and to all the parties de instance, et uh, uh, via email a copy of his written withdrawal de cette of lettre de retrait qu'il a signé de la renonciation qu'il avait faite right auparavant. Et je tenais à vous en informer immédiatement. The President, le the Council for Mr. Nuntier, please uh, rise. Coupe, vous Can you also tell the Chamber, please, Pouvez -vous indiquer à la chambre? more precisely, Avec un peu plus de précision. concerning the withdrawal of the waiver of Mr. Nun Chie. So we would like Le to be advised as to whether he has waived his si right to be pr uh, present entirely during the proceedings concerning the role of Mr. Nun Chie or sur la de other parts. Sur son rôle, ou um, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I understand perfectly Maître well the question. Coppes, he has uh, waived his right to be present the the documents documents so his documents documents so documents 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 during the presentation of the documents during the presentation of the the presentation of the So the presentation of the prosecution in respect of the role of the prosecution concerning the role of the prosecution the waiver. As I, as I have discussed this with um, with, with, with uh, my colleagues on the room, that was the Sonarun. recommendation that we would give Tell him. Donc I presume that the recommendation although I'm not able que to be clear, reçu, I presume that sûr, that is, in fact, mais je uh, the extent of his waiver. Que sa renonciation porte précisément là-dessus. The President, uh, Judge Cartwright, you may now uh, proceed. Yes, thank you, President. I, ju I just want to clarify one thing, Mr. Coppe. Uh, you said he has uh, waived his right to be present during the presentation, in effect, during the presentation of the documents relating to him. I presume you mean withdrawn that waiver, uh, just to be quite clear. Thank you very much. Bah, 
the president. Le président. Thank you. Merci. The chamber wishes to also inform the parties concerning the result of medical examination en ce qui of Mr. Nwanjir submitted to the chamber today. The Nguyen treating Chia doctors of Mr. Nwanjir at the Khmer Soviet French Hospital conducted an examination and noted that his general condition Chia, is good. Il a he relevé caps que son occasionally but his body temperature bon, is normal when he's à tous, mais la température de son corps est normale. Uh, breath uh, is also normal, Sa although he's normal, still weak uh, and il cannot uh, get up without any même assistance même as se yet. Lever, and the aidé. doctors also emphasize that his health condition improves uh, y a une de better son état de santé as opposed to yesterday. Par rapport à hier. So this is the update on the medical report we have just obtained. Voilà donc les dernières informations que nous avons obtenues. Counsel for Mr. Kiosampon, we noted you were on your feet a moment Je ago. You may now proceed. Je constate que l'avocate de Kiosampon s'était levée. Je vous en prie. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Bonjour, tout d'abord. Bonjour much, également Mr. President. à uh, Mesdames et Messieurs de la Chambre et à l'ensemble des partis. Well uh, je dois faire une requête à ce stade uh, des débats, en tout cas de la présentation uh, des documents par uh, le bureau des coprocureurs uh, dans le cadre le, de uh, la présentation des documents uh, relatifs uh, au rôle de Monsieur Kiosampan. Et uh, pour que ma requête soit bien comprise et entendue, je souhaite uh, au préalable rappeler euh, la décision de votre chambre euh, en date du 20 juin 2012 aux références suivantes E 96 bar 7 et plus particulièrement au paragraphe 22 de cette décision qui se lit comme suit. Au vu du cadre juridique en vigueur devant les CETC, la Chambre considère que les éléments de preuve qui tendent à prouver les actes ou le comportement des accusés et qui lui sont présentés sous la forme de déclarations écrites ou de transcriptions de dépositions en lieu et place de témoignages oraux sont, en dehors des quelques exceptions précisées ci-dessous, interdits par la loi au sens de la règle 87.3d du règlement intérieur. Par conséquent, à moins que la défense n'ait la possibilité d'interroger leurs auteurs à l'audience, on me dit de ralentir, je répète la dernière phrase de ce paragraphe, par conséquent, à moins que la défense n'ait la possibilité d'interroger leurs auteurs à l'audience, de telles déclarations ou transcriptions de dépositions ne pourront être admises en tant qu'éléments de preuve au procès. Euh, Monsieur le Président, c'est sur la base de votre décision que je demande qu'aujourd'hui, euh, Monsieur le coprocureur ne soit pas autorisé à faire état des documents 20, dont les références sont les suivantes, 10.18, et quand je dis document 20, c'est évidemment euh, sur la liste indicative euh, des documents à utiliser euh, dans le cadre de la présentation euh, du rôle de l'accusé que s'en pour les 30 et 31 janvier 2013. Donc le document numéro 20, aux références 10.18, qui est une, euh, un courrier euh, de feu euh, sans Sianouk. Je demande également qu'il ne soit pas autorisé à faire état euh, des documents numéro 70 et 71 de cette même liste euh, aux références suivantes. Le premier, IS 20.35. Le deuxième, E 190.35. 1.72 E 
Point 72. Point et pour 72. les interprètes, je récapitule qu'il s'agit des pièces numéro 20, 70 et 71 These sur la liste des documents 20, euh, annoncés euh, par M. le coprocureur dans le cadre de la présentation des documents contre M. Que s'en Je précise également qu'il y a un autre document du même type, qui est le document numéro 73, E3-464. Je précise en ce qui concerne le courrier de Feu le Roi Sianouk, que cela devrait poser d'autant moins de problèmes que dans une réponse euh, au, à la liste de témoins proposés par la défense de Pieux Santan. C'est une réponse euh, des coprocureurs, bien sûr, euh, dans l'annexe B de cette réponse. Euh, aux références suivantes, E9, bar 14, bar 1, bar 1, point 12, alors le RN en anglais et le 00, 65, 00, 78, au numéro 37 d'un tableau qui présentait donc les témoins que la défense de Pieux Sampan souhaitait voir appeler à la barre, il y avait le nom de Norodom Sianouk et euh, le, les coprocureurs s'y étaient opposés en expliquant que son témoignage était dénué de pertinence. Dans ces conditions, je pense qu'il euh, n'y a pas de raison aujourd'hui euh, qu'on vienne aujourd'hui nous, nous, nous présenter un document pour lequel nous n'aurons malheureusement pas la possibilité euh, d'avoir plus d'informations de la part de la personne qui l'a écrite, puisqu'elle est décédée aujourd'hui. Je vous demande donc de respecter simplement euh, le, le principe que vous avez dicté dans euh, le cadre de la décision que je viens de rappeler et en conséquence euh, d'indiquer à M. le coprocureur qu'il ne pourra pas faire état de ces documents dans le cadre de cette audience. Je vous remercie du temps que vous m'avez accordé. Le Président, la parole est au coprocureur. Le coprocureur international. Merci, M. le Président. Bonne après-midi, Your Honours. Bonne après-midi, les juges. It is unfortunate that we have to start this uh, presentation with a series of corrections as to the Council's uh, legal solutions. Um, the statements to which my learned friend referred are statements of individuals who are deceased, and such statements are subject to a different set of rules applicable at the international level. Those rules are in fact referred to in your Honour's decision from which my learned friend was reading. And had my learned friend continued to read, she would have reached paragraph 32, which describes and explains in the words of your Honours that statements of individuals who are unavailable or deceased de can be admitted into evidence even if they relate to the acts si and conduct of, of the accused. So my learned Donc, friend's submissions are misguided. In fact, your honors have permitted erronées, en fait, these types of statements um, de to be admitted uh, given that the authors are unavailable. That decision is fully consistent with international practice. Um, so we invite your honors to uh, refuse the, the application made by learned, my learned friend uh, and permit us to uh, come to these uh, documents and, and use them in the course of our presentation, which would in any event be likely tomorrow. So we will reach these documents tomorrow and perhaps the Chamber can consider the matter um, following the hearing or uh, wearing your hands if you wish to rule now. la Chambre si elle décide que nous devons le faire dès à présent. The President, uh, thank you. Le Président, Council la for parole Mr. est à la Défense. Allez-y, je vous en prie. Oui, merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank je you, pense qu'une précision est à apporter en réponse 
à ce que vient de dire uh, mon uh, confrère de la partie adverse. Uh, simplement, lorsque vous voulez utiliser une déclaration d'une personne décédée qui a trait aux actes uh, et au comportement de l'accusé, il ne s'agit pas de le faire dans le cadre d'une présentation de documents uh, dans laquelle les plaidoiries sont effectivement limitées, mais de faire une requête spécifique à la Chambre de façon à ce qu'elle puisse trancher dessus. Dans ces conditions, je maintiens l'opposition que j'ai formulée. Hereby uh, maintain our position.
The president. Le président. The chamber would like uh, to hand over to Judge Laverne. Le juge Laverne to address va this issue. Les explications nécessaires à ce sujet. Je vous en prie, allez-y. Juge Laverne. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Je vais être assez bref. Thank you, President. Uh, I shall be rather brief, Mr. Co-Prosecutor. The Chamber les, uh, uh, has heard par, uh, la the objections posed by the defense of Mr. Kyosampong with respect to certain documents. Stade, At this particular si stage, the Chamber would like to know whether the documents that are being opposed by the defense of Mr. Kyosampong figures on the list that have been submitted before the Chamber or if they are documents nouveaux that are entirely new and are being introduced for the first time, in which case they would be subject to different rules and procedures. The Chamber has received documents on which E3 has been recorded, but could you please specify Et puis par ailleurs, the status of que, the documents euh, in question. Pas nécessairement utiliser ces documents, and présenter we ces gather that you do not uh, intend to have those documents presented or admitted this afternoon. Could you uh, please specify as to whether you will be doing so this afternoon or tomorrow morning? Thank you. Uh, thank you, Judge Laverne. Um, all of these documents were included in our Rule 80 list, um, dans la liste which was submitted in April 2011. Um, one of them was at that time, I believe, proposed uh, by us as an additional document, um, and, and that is E190.1.72. Um, I will, of course, verify um, overnight, and I, I will have that information uh, ready um, first thing in the morning. Uh, or even tonight, matin, uh, I don't propose to use these particular documents um, in the time we have remaining today. So I certainly will um, inform the Donc, Chamber and the parties, uh, or rather parties confirm uh, for the Chamber and the parties that they were on our Rule 80 list um, tonight. And um, if need be, we can provide soir. further uh, information uh, verifying at least in relation to one of the individual individuals that he is deceased. But uh, I stress we, we chose these particular statements because the authors um, are deceased and because they were evidence that we proposed uh, to put before your honours. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honours. Thank you. Le président. We would like uh, to Merci. now hand over to the prosecution la parole est to present à the documents. Qui pourra présenter ces documents. Mr. Wayne Hart. Good afternoon, Mr. President, Your Honours. Good afternoon to my learned colleagues. Bon and good morning. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. Les juges, chers confrères. I am Wayne Hart with my colleague, Mr. Tariq Abdulhaq. Uh, will be presenting some Mon documents concerning the role of Mr. Kyosampan. Your Honours will recall that. On the 13th and 14th of February 2012, we conducted a presentation of documents relevant to the role of Kyo Song Pong in the period preceding the 17th of April 1975. The documents we will present today build on that presentation and so we invite your honors 
to consider the documents shown in the two presentations together as they form part of the same conjointe. Il s'agit d'éléments indissociables. I will provide a brief overview of our presentation and then with your leave I will hand the floor over to my colleague quoi, who will present la the documents. documents. The documents we will be showing les fall into the following categories. Appartiennent aux catégories One. suivantes. Premièrement, Q Sampon's membership of high-level bodies within the Communist Party of Cambodia, including the Party Central Committee PCK, and his attendance at the meetings of the CPK Standing Committee. À des réunions du comité permanent du PCK. Number two. Documents which relate to Kyosampan's role in the establishment of Democratic Kampuchea, the adoption of its constitution, the recognition of Norodam Sihanouk as head of state, and the establishment of the new presidium with Kyosampan as its head. Number three, documents which evidence Kyo Sampan's oversight of Democratic Cambodia's Ministry of Commerce, including numerous ministry reports addressed to Kyo Sampan. Number four, Documents Quatrièmement, relating to arrests of Ministry of Commerce cadres who had been working in offices under Kyo Sampan's supervision. Dans des sous la supervision de Kyo Sampan. Number five. Cinquièmement, Kyo Sampan's speeches, les de Kyo Sampan, which contain endorsements of CPK policy de la and reflect his role in the party and in the Democratic Cambodia government. Number six, Amnesty International Correspondence addressed to Kyo Sampan during the Democratic Cambodia period, which sought to bring to his attention the mass crimes being committed in Cambodia. De masse qui était alors commis au Cambodge. Number seven. Kyo Sampan's interviews, interviews and publications, including several video recordings, where the accused discusses his role during the Democratic Cambodia period, crime, the crimes committed during the period, and his relationship with other leaders of the party, and number eight, Kyo Sampan's statements to the co-investigating judges de in which par les he further discusses his role. Dans il une fois de plus son role. Of course, our time is limited, entendu, temps limité. so it is impossible sera donc to present de all documents which relate to Kyo Sampan's role. role de Kyo Sampan. In this sense, the documents we will show are a representative sample of a larger body of evidence 
relating to the role of the accused. These documents are relevant because they show, among other things, Kyosampan's membership of the leadership de of the communist du party of Kampuchea. Et du Kampuchea Democratic. and Democratic Kampuchea. His support for and contributions to the party's policies parti, qu'il y a contribué his contemporaneous awareness of the crimes being committed in furtherance of those policies dans la mise en œuvre de ces politiques. and his rigorous defenses of those policies. De ces politiques. Mr. President and Your Honours, I would like Monsieur le Président, Mesdames, Messieurs les Juges, now to hand présent, over the floor to my colleague, Mr. Tariq Abdullah. I am very Abdoulak. grateful. Merci. The President. Le Président. Thank you. Merci. Before handing over to Avant the de prosecutor, la au the Chamber wishes to also inform the la public concerning the health condition of Mr. Public Nunchier. La santé According de to Nunchia. the report that we obtained from le rapport the Khmer-Soviet Friendship Hospital, Soviétique, the report indicates that uh, Mr. Nunchia is to be discharged Nunchia from the hospital tomorrow at 2 p.m. À 14 In the report, it states clearly that Mr. Nunchia had been admitted to the hospital since the 13th of January, and he had been admitted janvier. to the hospital for 14 days uh, until the Il day he donc will be à discharged. The report jours. signed by Dr. Kum Samsan and approved le by the vice le director Kum of the Khmer Soviet a reçu Friendship Hospital. Du directeur. Next, uh, we would like hôpital. to hand over to Mr. Tariq Abdullah to present the documents. La parole est donnée à Tariq Abdullah pour la présentation des documents. Thank you, Mr. President. Le procureur. And Merci, as I commence, uh, if I may indicate first that in Avant a brief uh, time, okay. um, as my colleague was addressing the court, I checked. Oui. Uh, our Rule 18 moment, mon confrère, list, uh, and indeed all of the documents to which cour, uh, the Council for Q. Sampan objected earlier were on our, uh, on our list in April 2011, uh, but I will confirm that by now with specific um, references to the annexes so that that's easy to verify. Your Honours, we'd like to begin our presentation of documents relevant to the role of Q. Sampan with a Je vais commencer la présentation sur les look documents at sur le rôle the de Q. statements which Q. Sampan has made to the co-investigating judges. De Q. Sampan, au juge These documents are uh, relevant because they are recent. Um, they address specifically some of the allegation against, allegations against Q. Sampan, sur des uh, and they state for the record um, his version of the events. Et il they also de contain des faits uh, a number of important um, uh, factual admissions oui. by Q. Sampan about his role within the party. Um, sur les faits it was in late 2007, Your Honours, that Q. Q. Sampan uh, made four statements before the co-investigating judges. Uh, and I will give the E3 numbers so that they are uh, available for the record. Um, they are E3 slash 557. This was, in fact, an adversarial hearing uh, at which Mr. Q. Sampan made a, a statement. Um, the next was E3 slash 27. This was his first 
actual interview with the co-investigating judges on the 13th of December. Then there are two further uh, interviews on the 14th of December 2007. The first is E3 slash 37 and the second E3 slash 210. This was in December 2007. By February 2008, Mr. Kyusampan decided to cease uh, cooperation and giving statements um, to the co-investigating judges and asserted a right to remain silent, and this is found in E3-702. If I can go first to the interview of the 13th of December 2007, which, as I indicated, was E3-27. By way of overview, this document discusses a number of uh, facts relevant to, to this case, including uh, Q. Sampan's whereabouts uh, in the immediate uh, days preceding the fall of Phnom Penh. Uh, he's, um, presence at Udong together with Pol Pot and a number of other senior uh, members of the party. Um, it also contains discussion about Mr. Q. Sampan's work from 1970 to 1975. Uh, then goes on to discuss the entry into Phnom Penh uh, and his uh, whereabouts uh, in Phnom Penh together with Pol Pot and Nguyen Chia um, in 1975. And lastly, he discusses also uh, the composition of the Standing Committee and uh, of the Central Committee, um, as well as the frequency of meetings of the Standing Committee. My colleague, Bill Smith referred to this document earlier and read from it, um, so I will not uh, spend a lot of time on it, uh, certainly not cover the same portions, uh, but I may read one passage in particular uh, because it relates to Mr. Q. Sampan's uh, actions around the 17th of April, um, and if we could uh, show this document on the screen, the relevant ERNs are Khmer 00 156 614 French 00 156 666 and English 00 156 743 and here Q. Sampan is responding to a question as to where, where he had come to, when he, uh, where he had come from when he entered Phnom Penh. And this is his response. Quote, for about 10 days, I had been at the headquarters of Pol Pot to the west of Wudong. I would like to assert that I did not participate in the work of the headquarters. I was just present in the headquarters and observed the events upon which Pol Pot briefed me once in a while. Question, who else was present with you at the time? Answer, I think that there were just the two of us. Nunchia may have been there too, but I'm not sure. There were also some commanders from the army who commanded the battle to overthrow Phnom Penh, who came on a regular basis. Tamok, or his deputies, in brackets, who was the commander of the northern zone, or Khoi Tuan, or his deputy, K. Pok. And there may have been Sao Pim as well, commander of the eastern zone, but he only came occasionally. The next question is, was Son Sen present at the time? And answer, yes, of course, but he, but he had his own headquarters. The next passage is two pages down. Um, Q. Sampan is asked, between 1970 
in 1975, did you stay permanently with the Khmer Rouge leaders? Yes. Because my role was to establish the liaison with King Norodom Sihanouk, and when the United Front of Kampuchea was established after the coup d'état in 1970, Prince Norodom Sihanouk knew neither Pol Pot nor Tamok. I was the only one who could establish relations with the prince. I will just indicate briefly for the record that the next section of that same interview deals with um, the whereabouts of Pol Pot, Nguyen Chia and Q Sam Tan uh, in, upon arrival in Phnom Penh. Um, and he indicates essentially that they stayed together um, initially at the railway station, then at the Silver Pagoda, and ultimately at the riverfront. And the final relevant portion for, for present purposes is found, again, Ensuite, a few pages on. Pages plus loin. This is at Khmer ERN 00156 619 French 00156672 and Khmer I apologize, in English, 00156751. The importance of this passage is simply that Q. Sampan acknowledges that he was a member of the Central Committee, first as a candidate member in 1971 until 1976 when he became a full rights member. Immediately below that passage, he is asked the following question. You have said that you participated in, quote, expanded, end quote, meetings of the Standing Committee. Can you tell us about this participation? Response, the introductory submission has indicated that I had participated in 14 out of 19 meetings. I forget the exact number. But it's around that, given that I'm only aware of the meetings I attended. As I have already explained, during the course of those meetings, the issues of national defense, the national reconstruction, as well as the conflict between Vietnam and democratic Kampuchea were discussed. I will move on, move on to the next uh, document, Your Honours, and this is the next uh, uh, interview on the 14th of December, E3-37. And in this document, by way of a summary, Q. Sampan describes the appointments to Office 870, that is the appointment of Duan and Q. Sampan himself. He also describes his cohabitation at Office K3 with other leaders, and he also touches upon uh, the issue of the speeches he gave as President of Democratic Kampuchea. I'm going to be selective in the passages I read. Um, Je vais choisir les passages que je vais vous lire. In the very first question and answer, plutôt sélective. Donc, Q. Sampan says the following. This is at Khmer ERN 00156675, French 00156680, and English 1568 00156675. The question is as follows. Uh, earlier, you said that Suavasi, alias Duan, was the chairman of Office 870. How long did he fulfill this function, and who was his successor? Response, 
jusqu'à quand il exerçait ses fonctions. Il était appointé quand Pol Pot a établi son office sur le Tonle Sap Riverfront, après le départ de la Silver Pagoda en juin 1975. Il a été arrêté en 1977. Mais je ne l'ai su que par la suite, après la chute des Khmer Rouges, c'est-à-dire après 1979. Je ne suis pas étonné de son absence, car comme je l'ai dit, chacun d'entre nous devait devoir nous occuper de nos tâches respectives. Il voyageait beaucoup. De nous. Le prochain passage est sur le prochain passage. Page, uh, and it relates to the membership of Office 870, um, a topic I referred to earlier. Question, could you describe the structure and composition of Office Monti 870? Response, it was one office of the Standing Committee. It had only two members, Duan and me. Duan was the chairman, assisted by colleagues such as Pong, and he was in charge of political affairs. As for me, as I mentioned earlier, I was in charge of preparing the price list for the cooperatives and the distribution of goods to the zones under direction from the standing committee. And I also had to maintain relations with King Norodom Sihanouk. The next passage I wish to refer to is at Khmer ERN 00156677, French 00156683, and English 00156756, and it relates to the functions of Office 870. Question, what were the other functions of Office 870 besides the functions you have described? Answer, at first this office was not so important, but at a later, later stage it gained in importance because it was tasked to monitor suspected members of the party for the standing committee. I learned this after the revolution collapsed when I reached Pélin. The last passage in this document is from the Standing Committee Minutes, dated March 1, 1977. The content of those speeches. Question: Did you agree with the content of those speeches you made? And if you disagreed with the content, could you give us an example of such disagreement? Response: Generally, I agreed with the content, because there was an ultimatum imposed by Vietnam in May 1976. I recall that I was appointed president of the State Presidium in April 1976. But on certain points, I disagreed with what was said in the speeches. For instance, the elimination of the currency which resulted in the absence of small industry or handicraft development. L'absence du développement de l'artisanat et de la petite industrie. And a little bit further down, plus loin, I could not make my disagreement public because we did not want to reveal to the public that there were disagreements within the party itself. What is more, I would not have survived if I dared to reveal any disagreement or objection to anything. The obvious example of that was the case of Kunim. And Your Honours, and the final document from which I will read uh, from the collection of Q. Sampan's OCIJ interviews Dernier is E3 slash 210. It essentially continues on the 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 theme of fear and arrests 
to which Q Sampan referred the disappearances and arrests of Hu Yun and Hu Nim. This is at Khmer ERN 00156689, French 00156694. And English 00156948. Question. This morning you indicated that the arrest of Hu Nim and Hu Yun were evidence that it was impossible to express any disagreement. So you knew about the arrests and executions. The response to that proposition is as follows. I brought up the examples of Hu Nim and Hu Yun, but I only learned the information about the arrest of these two people after 1979. Question, is it not contradictory on the one hand to confirm that you learned of the arrest of the two people only after 1979, and on the other hand to mention that you lived under threat before 1979? Response. I do not know how to explain to you more clearly. At that time, there was an ultimatum imposed by Vietnam. Pol Pot himself and the CPK felt threatened. This situation meant that it was not possible to envisage any dissonance. Question. Do you still maintain that you did not learn of any arrests before 1979? Response, not any. I observed that some members of the Central Committee disappeared one after another. I could not inform you about the names because I was not close to them. Nonetheless, I did not know the exact extent of the arrests at the time. And before we leave this document, uh, a couple more brief passages. He alleges on the following page that he only learned of the extent of the massacres at the end of 1998. He learned of the extent of the massacres at the end of 1998 through his readings. Now, coming back to Another topic of interest, or rather, for the moment, uh, just to close off the issue of arrests, I'll quote from a passage which appears at Khmer ERN 00156691, French 00156966. And English 00156949. Donc en Khmer 0156991, en français 0156966, et en anglais 0156940. And he discusses his knowledge, or the extent of his knowledge, during the democratic Kampuchea period. In relation to the excesses which had been denounced during Auto-criticism, I would like to give you an example. A number of cadres believed it appropriate to punish those who committed adultery by shaving half the hair from their heads and exposing them to the public. Such mistakes were denounced and corrected. In relation to the arrests in Preavihia province, they did occur. But the prisoners were released. There were breaches committed at the local level, but the leaders did not approve them. Finally, in relation to the disappearance of the members of the Central Committee and the Standing Committee, everyone seemed to approve, but I did not know the extent or the scope of the arrests. Finally, in this document, a reference to the evacuation of Phnom Penh and the feelings of Q Sampan during that period. 
qu'on pensait que ce n'était pas ERN 0015690, en anglais 0015694950, Pertaining to the evacuation of Phnom Penh, I clearly realize that the population might have fallen along the way. That is why, after the fall of the movement, I asked myself the reason why the movement in which I believed made this kind of decision, which deviated from the movement's principles. The relevance of that last passage, Your Honours, is that it contains a statement in which Q. Sampan purports to express Q. Q. Sampan a concern in April 1975, dès avril 1975 on his part regarding the suffering that France was being inflicted on the population. population. We will see shortly what Q. Sampan was saying Nous publicly in that ce que period. Q. Sampan en public. The next topic to which I would like to turn now, Your Honours, has to do with the role which Q. Sampan played in the Communist Party of Kampuchea, in the upper echelons of the party, and also within the institutions of democratic Kampuchea, and furthermore, uh, the contributions that are reflected in the documents that, that we have available to us. If I could turn now to document E3 slash 182. E3 slash 182. This document was referred to earlier today by my colleague. It is a minute of the Standing Committee meeting of the 9th of October 1975. We will only look at it for a brief moment. And to build on my colleague's uh, discussion of this document, of course, the document contains a delegation of work and operational processes. And if we look at the first page, in all three languages, the delegation of work and operational processes has a, an order where number one is comrade secretary, number two is deputy secretary, and number three is comrade Van, or Vincerim. Of course, number two being Nguyen Chia. And we see that number four is Comrade Hem, whose responsibilities are indicated as follows. Responsible for the front and the royal government and commerce for accounting and pricing. What is relevant to observe on this document is that Two individuals who are members of the standing committee, that is under number six, Comrade Q, Son Sen, and number seven, Comrade Vaughan, or Vaughan Vett, appear in this list below Comrade Hem or Q Sampan. A similar order can be seen in another document, which I will just refer to without showing it on the screen. This is document E3-858, and it is a list of bodyguards and other staff assigned to the offices with various designations in Phnom Penh. And in that document, we see that the listing is Similar in that we have K1 at the top, K1, K1 of course being the uh, workplace le and le residence of Pol Pot. Pol Pot. Below that, Puis, we have at K3, Uncle K3, 2, oncle, below him, deux, Brother Van or Yeng Suri, and below Yeng him, Suri, Brother Hem or Q Sampan. 
the low Q Sampan brother Vaughan. Your Honours, my colleague discussed earlier the, the frequency Mon of meetings of the Standing Committee. Décrit tout à l'heure la fréquence and des réunions du Comité permanent. It is interesting to look at the attendance at those meetings Il est intéressant de regarder la liste des participants from the perspective réunions. of the attendance of Q Sampan. Notamment celle de Q Sampan. We have been able to identify a total of 23 meetings of the leadership of the party. Du parti. Now, some of these meetings are Certaines identified as being meetings of the Standing Committee. Sont comme des du Others are not. Permanent, non. But the membership or the attendance of the individuals at the meeting indicates that it is a meeting of Indique leading cadre or, le or the leaders of the party in so far as Paul Pot Nuanchia and other members of the Standing Committee are present. Out of these ces 23 sur ces sets 23 of meeting records, réunions pour lesquelles nous avons des procès verbaux, only 19 contain 19 lists of individuals attending. Contiennent la liste des participants. Within those 19, sur ces 19 Q Sampan is recorded as attending 16. 16 fois or somewhere in the vicinity of 84% of the meetings. The only people attending more frequently than Q Sampan are Pol Pot, Pol Pot, who attended 17 meetings, and Nunchia, who attended 18. Qui a 18. Other members of the standing committee, including du comité permanent, Son Sen, comme Son Sen and Vaughan Vett, attended 10 or less meetings of this, this reunion, uh, moins. of this body. Mr. President, I'm mindful of the time. I can continue for a few Je more minutes uh, with two uh, documents or so, or I can stop here if you would I will continue. Um, Le président fait signe que oui. We now move on to considering the procureur, events bien, in 1975. Nous maintenant continuer de parler des événements en, en, en 1975. Which relates to the return of the late King Father Norodom Sihanouk le retour to de feu, uh, Cambodia le roi and in that Norodom context Sihanouk, au Cambodia. to the to his resignation from uh, his then role as the head of state and his replacement by Q Sampan. We would like to now play a brief video for your honours. Um, and there are in fact two segments totaling approximately three minutes. They come from document D295 slash 2 slash 2.23 R. That is D295 slash 2 slash 2 point 23 R. And with your permission, Mr. President, I would ask the AD unit to play these two segments. Um, they are designated in our table, which the AD unit has, as segments A1 and A2. The President, you may proceed. AV officer, please play the video clip. As requested by the prosecutor.
le coprocureur. And if I could ask the AV unit also to play the next uh, segment, which is A2, uh, it is only one minute long. Of course, Your Honours, what we're viewing is uh, video footage of the return of Norodom Sihanouk from China to Cambodia, and you see there that he's accompanied by Kyu Sampan. The President, you may proceed. Vous y êtes autorisé. AV officer, please veuillez faire passer l'extrait vidéo clip, comme demandé par l'accusation. As per the request by the co-prosecutor. This footage is, uh, dates from around September 1975, and we will now trace the events as they pertain to the fate of the then Prince Norodom Sihanouk and the establishment of new institutions of democratic Kampuchea. Mr. President, should I continue with the next document, or would you like me to stop here? Uh, the President, thank you, Mr. Prosecutor. The time is now convenient for the day adjournment. The Chamber will adjourn now and resume tomorrow on the 31st of January 2013, starting from 9 a.m. in the morning. And tomorrow hearing will be dedicated to the presentation of documents concerning the co-accused to be presented by the prosecutor. Aura de le faire. Is there any issue with the translation? Y a-t-il un problème de traduction ou d'interprétation? Once again, the time is Je now convenient répète. for the day adjournment. The chamber will resume Les tomorrow, demain, starting from matin, nine o'clock in the morning. Tomorrow, the Chamber will hear the presentation concerning key documents relevant to the roles of the accused to be presented by the prosecutors. Any observation or objections of concerned party to this presentation uh, will be also heard. Uh, this is the information for the parties as well as members of the public. Security guards are instructed to bring the co-accused back to the detention facilities and have them back uh, before 9 o'clock. And the co-accused shall remain in the holding cell downstairs where the audio-visual equipment is there for them to follow the proceeding remotely. The court is now adjourned.